you have a controller that looks like this, ah! well, fuck off. No, uh, this video is gonna be uh, going over some things that we can do to clean up this Resident Evil 5 controller. It's pretty scuffed. Uh, the analog sticks are shot. It's gonna need new A, B, X, and Y buttons. Um, this, I, I can't tell. I think this is an eraser. I, I don't, I don't know at this point. Um, we're gonna need to look over the bumpers. That's fine. Everything's working fine. So uh, we're gonna get into the tools that you need in order to open this and how to go about doing everything. So one thing I want to state before starting any of this, um, a lot of the things that I'm going to cover today for this Xbox 360 controller can also be uh, used with Xbox One controllers. They're almost the same design, use a lot of the same screws. It's a similar concept. So even if you aren't doing a 360 controller, you can still learn some things for the Xbox One controllers. So some things we're going to need for this particular controller. Going to need analog sticks. One, two, they're both shot. Uh, I'm going to need uh, A, B, X, and Y buttons, which I will grab from a parts controller that I have. And I'm going to need a Torx T8 screwdriver. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, one thing I would invest in with the T8 is look for, especially on eBay, they have them really cheap, T8 security. The security bits actually, I don't believe it's going to focus at all. The security bits actually have a hole um, because the newer run of controllers actually added a little peg in the middle of the screws um but with that hole it drops right in and it's fine and it comes right out so um there is what is it two four six seven oh okay batteries seven <laughs> screws um one of which is if you haven't already opened your controller it is hidden behind this label here um you can do what the person who used to own this controller did and just go right through you can be a little bit fancy with it and take a hot air station and just kind of heat it up enough to peel it back and then put it back on. Um, you can use some sort of cleaner. It, it, I mean, it's all down to preference at that point. Uh, I'm just going to leave this controller as is because this is going to be my console, my controller. So I'm not selling this. So, you know, it'll be all right. All right, so that'll just pull off. You have your rear piece. You can set that aside for now. I am going to clean these later, so uh, no issues. The thing you want to be careful with are the rumble motors. Um, there is a little JST, I think it is, connector where you can just pull them out if you want. I'm going to leave them in because I'm just going to kind of keep it all together. Um, and if you wanted to, you know, just completely get rid of the rumble in general. For this controller you can just leave them out um it works fine without them i have two controllers that i've done that to uh reduces the weight and takes out the rumble so you'll never have to worry about it again but again it's all preference so let's get those i don't think there are any screws holding the actual pcb down There we go. And voila, there's your controller. And the thumbsticks are as easy as just pulling them off and throwing them away. So there's that. And that gives you access to all your buttons and everything else. Um, you can, if you have a button that, oh, these look disgusting. Um, wow, that looks fucking gross. Jesus. What is this? Are these sitting on top of the standard buttons? That's so weird. That is like so weird. Oh yeah, what the fuck? Are these real shell casings? No. No way. No fucking way. Really? No. I don't know. Either way, I'm getting rid of them. Um, it's a weird way of doing it. I have Xbox One shell casing 
uh, buttons that just completely replace all of this. Um, but I feel like these are kind of custom, which is cool, but again, I'm not keeping them. Um, those are going in the trash. I'm going to pull the actual A, B, X, and Ys from my parts controller. And we'll go from there. And the other thing that I will be replacing is this Xbox button. Um, the earlier runs had the brushed look to them, whereas the older run controllers have a reflective surface. I like the reflective surface, so I'm going to be replacing this with a newer one. All right, so I went ahead and got all the parts that I wanted out of the part controller. Um, a, B, X, and Y. Actually, you know, properly set up the Xbox button. Uh, I have yet to actually clean them yet. I think this controller had soda or something spilled on it because it's there's certain parts where it's, it's gummy as hell. Um, but that's fine. The thing I wanted to focus on now was the left and right bumpers. Um, this piece is actually two pieces. Um... Let me see if I can get it apart properly. There we go. So that's actually two pieces. So that makes it a hell of a lot easier. I drop this out, set this piece aside, and then same thing with this one. And now that goes with that. And this piece now goes with this. And I can put that back together with the part controller. And we're good. <laughs> so now uh, these two pieces can go back together um, if I set them up correctly. And they just kind of lock into place, like so. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Forget about it. It's good. It's a brand new controller now. So, that's there. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and wash up these parts. Um, I did pull... Let me see. I'm debating on whether or not I want to use the rubber pieces from the parts controller, which are... This is D-pad. This is your ABXY center uh, start and select because they're pretty much identical and they both feel fine. Eh, the Y button's kind of iffy. These definitely feel better. This one feels slightly worn, so we're gonna take these. These came from the original controller. It's going in the parts controller now. They're not, they work, they're just not, like these are, almost never used which is a shame that that controller is a parts controller in general but it's fine we got parts so i'm gonna clean these and uh i'm gonna clean the shell the shell's gonna get cleaned up i'm gonna use some um hot water and a little bit of soap and i'm gonna use a toothbrush i thought i had a toothbrush here it's a little parts brush i use just to kind of get into the fine details um start and select all that jazz um, it's just got some grime and shit. This actually, this controller is actually not too bad. It's just a little scuffed up and needs a little love. So I'm going to do that. I'll come back and, uh, we'll throw it all together. This is going to just cut into the video real quick. Um, because this showed up today. Um, I paid $14 and 42 cents for everything. Power cable, AV cables, controller, console. The downside is it's a Xenon. It was sold as red ring. It boots, right? That's good, it starts, you know, no red ring. No red ring at all, you know? No green rings either, but uh, yeah, no red rings, so that's cool. Should be fine. Oh. Oh. Um. Uh, boys? All right, so let's take that same console. <laughs> it's a fucking hard drive. Let's take that same console, right? Take the hard drive off. Set that aside. Go ahead, power back up. All right, we're booting again. Hey, we got the dashboard. So, $14.42 for a red ringed xbox when in reality it's a xenon it works fine and it just has a dead hard drive anyway back to the controller video that's it all right so all the parts have been washed they're kind of dried triggers are back on a little bit of a pain in the ass so i had to cut 
Um, we're gonna put the D-pad back in place, and that is, oh, let me see, this piece goes in here, and then this clips back in. I didn't show this on the teardown, only because I was originally gonna just wash it as one piece, but I noticed it was really, really freaking bad. So, that goes back together like that, and there's two screws down in here that I'm gonna put in now. Alright. So that's back in. Next, we're gonna need our buttons. Start and select A, B, X, and Y. I always mix these up all the time, so it's probably gonna happen again. Oh, no, first try, first try, all right. So, set this in. Yep, those are good, all right. So Y is at the top. B is uh, one of the sides. It's weird looking at a controller inverted. Uh, let me double check. Yeah. Oh! So, let's go back. We need X, A, and... And it's nice because once we get this down, we can... Oh, center button. Uh, duh. Uh, once we get this down, we can actually put the little rubber thingies. The actual button pads over top. And like I said, I'm going to use this one instead of the brushed one. I like the brushed, but... If I have a controller open, I'm going to replace it. And those go there. That goes here. And yeah, look at that boy. That looks good. Looks really good. I and mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely better than what it was. Um, we're going to set that down. Now the fun part, we get to put the new analog sticks on. Oh, they feel so good. Compared to those shitty ones, this controller is going to be mint. We have to add the bottom. Or try to add the bottom. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, and then add our top piece. That goes in right there. And like I said, pretty much everything that you do with this video and this controller if you're following along. Um, it, it's basically the same with an Xbox One controller. Pretty much every controller. Uh, let's make sure our sticks fit through. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, boy, look at that. It looks brand new. That looks fucking good. Like I said earlier, it's optional. If you want to put the motors back in, you can. If not, it doesn't make a difference other than weight and actual, you know, vibration. It's not like the controller isn't going to work. It'll work fine without them. Um, it all comes down to preference. I am going to put them back in. Uh, just because a long time ago, I used to, like, leave the weights out. Like, back when I was, like, really big into, like, playing COD and stuff on Xbox. But, like, nowadays, I just kind of collect this stuff. So... Uh, let's see, is the connector going to fight me or not? Nah? Oh, there we go. And then that just sits in right there. Just with a little bit of pressure. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned how it was before. You'll notice there's like a bump here. It's probably because it was flipped around the other way. But as long as it's in and your cables aren't kinked up or anything, and it's in properly, you'll be fine. Take the back shell. You want to go over the triggers first and make sure your battery coils, whatever the hell you want to call them, the springs, your battery or battery pack is in correctly. And you want to make sure it clicks a few times. Make sure everything falls back into place. See, that bumper still feels weird. Uh, I'll, I'll look at that another time. For now, we'll, you get the idea. Because like I said, this this controller is going to be my controller. I'm not selling it or anything. It's going to be for my own personal collection. So, Alright. Uh, let's get our screws back in. And we're just about done. Let's see. Right. 
throw a battery pack in there. Look at that. Beautiful. It's like a brand new controller. New analog sticks. It's beautiful. Again, it's not perfect, but it's it's a lot better than what it was before. So, yeah, that's that's it, man. That's how you do it. And like I said, for probably the third time now, everything that you've seen in this video can also be applied to Xbox One controllers. Um, most likely PlayStation 3 controllers, you know, PS4 controllers. A lot of them are, are very much the same internally so as long as you take your time and take them apart you can take something that looks like dog shit oh and make it something amazing all right so that does it for today's video uh thank you guys for watching hopefully you learned something and uh i'll catch you around thanks